All right, happy Thursday, students. We're almost there, almost to spring break. Um, today we are going to finish up or continue on our discussion about gerrymandering. Uh, the first thing we're going to do today is go over the questions from yesterday's activity. After that, we are going to actually gerrymander. We're going to try to become congressional map drawers, um, and we're going to learn what this practice actually looks like um, and how easy it is to really gerrymander districts, um, how to steal elections, in other words, right? Um, and then there are two parts we're going to complete today, one of which is going to be with me in this video. The second is going to be on your own or maybe with a partner. Once you're done with today's activity, just make sure that you submit. Okay. So first things first, the activity from yesterday, you had to read the article, Are Our Elections Rigged? And I hope it clarified exactly what gerrymandering is and what it looks like with some examples and the impact over time um, on our, on our um, constitutional and democratic system. So the question number one is, what has the effect of gerrymandering been? The answer to this question was found towards the beginning of the article, and it is that gerrymandering has greatly reduced the number of competitive districts and thus elections. It has made it almost impossible for the uh, party that is not in power to really have any chance of winning that election and turning a district from one political party to the other. Um, it adds to gridlock in Washington, which means that things don't really get done in Congress, as we know. And in turn, one of the things the article pointed out is that it's not actually reflective of how many people believe certain political beliefs throughout the country. And that is something that does hurt our democracy. So where does it originate from? It has kind of a funny story. It goes back to 1812 when a guy named Elbridge Jerry was the governor, um, he redrew his district to benefit his party, and it looked a little bit like a salamander. There's actually a cartoon posted within the article you can look at, salamander being like one of the lizards, amphibians. Um, and so that's where they combined the words jerry and salamander into gerrymandering. Words are weird. All right, number three, what has been the effect of computer technology and data on gerrymandering? It means that it's gotten much more precise. So if you don't have that word in your answer, make sure you add it. Because we know so much about people now with technology and data, um, gerrymandering can almost be sort of hammered down to even the exact street and address. And number four, what could the Supreme Court do to prevent gerrymandering? They could use judicial review and determine that the practice is unconstitutional. In turn, they could require that states use the same system. No state can do their own thing. Every state has to do the same system to make it more equitable. Um, that is what they could do. They have not done it yet. They've left it up to the states. Okay, so double check and pause the video that your answers follow mine. Once you've done that, come back to the video and we're going to move on to part two. Fun with gerrymandering. It's your turn to see if you could potentially gerrymander a district. On the map, R and D and I. Each stands for a unit of population, let's say 10 people, um, which has a majority of voters registered as Republicans, Democrats, or Independents. You can give many names, it doesn't matter. You can say pepperoni, onion, and pineapple from our pizza video. Um, legislative districts must have roughly the same number of citizens in them. So there are five units of population in each district. Looking at the political affiliation of the people in the districts, which party is the majority party in each one? So this is District 1 on the map. There are five units of population, five R's. The majority of them are R. All of them are. Therefore, District 1 is R. But let's jump to District 2. There are two R's and three D's. Therefore, the majority in this district is D, right? Now, there are some districts where it's actually an even split. That would be a competitive district, so you would put R slash D in that box. Okay, so go through, pause the video, and complete the rest of the table. Once you've done that, you can come back to the video. Now, as you are working on this activity, take into consideration, ladies and gentlemen, how many competitive districts there actually are. There really aren't that many. And that's one of the benefits, right, of people who want to gerrymander to benefit their own political party. Okay. 
Next part, your turn to gerrymander. You've been asked to serve as consultants in the Wilmetia State Legislature. See what I did there? The results of this 2010 census have been reported. The state legislature now has to redraw the district lines to reflect changes in population. Um, working individually, or I guess you can work with groups, I don't really care. Develop legislative districts that will favor either the Republican or Democratic Party. It doesn't matter. You choose on the map. All legislative districts must contain the same number of population units, which means five, just like our last activity. District must be contiguous. It has to be connected. Even if it's a narrow connection, it has to be connected. And you must have seven districts. So give it a try. You're going to go and try to gerrymander this map with those rules in mind. Other than that, once you've done this activity, you're going to submit it um, for a participation grade for today. Okay, guys, thank you. Have a good rest of your day.